Hello and welcome to Web Factory iForce Keda. In the previous video, I've introduced you to iForce Keda Studio and we've seen a basic Signals workflow. From Signal setup in Studio to data visualization with Smart Editor. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to another crucial part of SCADA workflows, alarming. i for SCADA Studio has a dedicated alarming section which allows you to set up the two parts that define a SCADA alarm, the alarm condition and the alarm event. As implied by their names, the relation between the alarm condition and the alarm event is straightforward. The event is triggered when the condition is met. As an example, we'll imagine an alarm that notifies us when the outside temperature goes below zero degrees Celsius. So let's start by defining an alarm condition. In Studio's alarming section, select the SCADA server listed under Alarm Conditions in the left side menu. As you've guessed, this is the SCADA server we have defined for our signals in the previous video. This demo SCADA server will be hosting our alarms as well. Right-click either on the server in the menu or inside the Alarm Conditions panel and select the New option to create a new condition. We can edit the new alarm condition inside the main panels table, but it's more practical to use the Condition Details panel for our configuration. First, let's rename the condition to something meaningful. Next, we need to decide upon the criteria, the actual logical process that defines this alarm condition iForSCADA Studio gives us plenty of logical operations to be used as criteria, but for our scenario, we need to make sure that our condition is met when the value of our temperature sensor signal is below zero. I'll select the signal value is less than the alarm constant criteria. The alarm constant should be, of course, zero. That's all for our basic alarm condition. Make sure to save the configuration and let's move on to the alarm event. The alarm event is dependent of two defining categories, the alarm group and the alarm type. Before defining the actual event, we need to set up the group and the type. Use the contextual menu to create both, each in their respective panels. Now let's create the alarm event itself. Since our alarm depends on the signal coming from the temperature sensor, we'll use the signal browser to select the right signal. I'll choose the demo signal buffer 2, since I know I can easily manipulate its value later. The alarm details panel allows us to edit our new alarm event, so let's make sure the alarm is active, it has the right name, it is online and has a meaningful default text. Note that our alarm type group and condition are already pre-selected since there is only one of each defined. We could use the corresponding drop-down inputs to select other if existing. i Studio offers great flexibility in options when setting up alarms. We can use the alarm details panel for advanced configuration like suppression interval, PLC acknowledgement, script execution and even automatic printing of alarms. We can also add custom extended properties to our alarms, translate their text in multiple languages or define advanced value replacements. This time though, we'll keep it simple, but I still want to add some translation text just to showcase the multilingual capabilities of i4SCADA. Don't forget to save your settings before leaving this panel, but if you do forget, i4SCADA Studio will prompt you to save your changes. Ok, so our basic alarm is defined in Studio. Now we want to use it in an actual visualization. Let's use Smart Editor for that. Inside the new project, I'll start with a core element. Then I'll drag the alarm viewer control on the canvas. As stated by its name, the alarm viewer will show us our ongoing alarm events at runtime. By default, the alarm viewer control needs no design time configuration and works out of the box, though for more advanced use cases, every property can be customized. I'll also use a signal input control, which we will connect to the buffer1 demo signal. This way we can control, at least in the video, the outside temperature. Finally, I'll add the language selector control to show how translations work in i4SCADA. Now it's time to publish our Smart Editor project. Before accessing the HTML visualization, let's start the i4SCADA server using the Service Manager. In the web browser, navigate to the localhost slash i4SCADA site. 
Our alarm viewer shows our alarm as inactive or gone, as it does not filter out inactive alarms by default. We can set the alarm viewer to show only active alarms right now and our alarm has disappeared. But as soon as we set the value of our hypothetical temperature sensor to anything below zero, the alarm condition is met by our value, so the alarm event is triggered. Now, check out what happens to the alarm text once we change the display language of our visualization. It instantly translates to the language selected in the drop-down. OK, this concludes our second video on iForSCADA Studio. We've seen how to set up and use alarms and how iForSCADA handles multiple languages with ease. In the next video, we'll go deeper down the rabbit hole and explore some more advanced ways to write values to PLCs. Until next time!